See this thing? This is called a vacuum tube, or it's also referred to as a valve. And it's pretty old technology. It was invented around 120 years ago. And they used to be a lot more popular than they are today. These could be found in every TV back when they were called television sets. And they could be found in every radio back when radio was the most popular form of media consumption. But things have changed. Nowadays, vacuum tubes are really only used in some niche categories. Soviet-era military equipment, audiophile-grade speaker systems, and guitar amplifiers. So because this technology is being so rarely used nowadays, that means one thing. There's less and less people who know how to build things with it, who know how to build guitar amps. So that brings us on to today's topic, because if you're an amp brand who wants to expand their range, wants to get amps built on a mass production in an OEM factory, there really aren't that many to choose from. There's a handful across the world. And that means that if you go looking for them, like I did, you can find them with relative ease. And that's where this comes in. Now you probably have a few questions about this amp. What is it? Who made it? How much was it? What does it sound like? And why is it orange? All good questions. So let's get answering. Okay, so one of these OEM factories that makes amps for some established and well-known amp brands is called Shenzhen Grand Technology. As the name would indicate, it's a factory in Shenzhen, China, which an uh, interesting fact about that is that that's where 90% of the world's electronics come from. So very likely the phone, the computer, the TV that you're watching this video on probably came from the same place. Not the same factory, but same overall area. But this particular factory offers its services to make amplifiers for any brand. If you start a brand or you're an established brand, doesn't matter, they'll make amplifiers if you pay them to. And one thing that caught my eye though, was they also make their own amps. They have a large array of amplifiers that are clones of Fenders, Marshalls, High Watts, Dumbles, and more interestingly than that, they're hand wired. All amplifiers used to be hand wired. You can find vintage amps from the 1970s and they tend to be hand wired. But with the introduction of printed circuit boards or PCBs, that's being seen less and less because it's far cheaper to make an amplifier with a PCB than it is to hand wire everything together. It just takes a lot more time. And hand wired amps are an interesting topic to say the least. Some people insist that they sound different. Others say that they don't. To be honest, I don't really care because there's a far more important aspect of hand-wired amps that I'm more interested in and that's the repairability factor. What are the bits on an amplifier that's going to break first? Very likely it's the bits that you're touching and messing with every day. So the switches, the inputs and output jacks, and then the pots that you're controlling the amplifier with. You're using them and that's likely going to be a weak point which means that when it eventually goes, you're going to have to replace them. And when it comes to PCB amps, it's a little bit more difficult. Whereas with hand-wired amps, it's very straightforward. Take a pot, for example. It's a couple of wires to solder and, and that's it. You could replace that in less than five minutes and it would be a very easy repair job. So there's an obvious advantage to hand-wired amps, but they do tend to cost more. Like I mentioned, they take longer to make. So they can be very expensive when buying them nowadays. So that begs the question, how much was one of these hand-wired amps from Grand? Well, this quote was from November 2022, so keep in mind, like absolutely everything else, the prices probably have gone up a bit since then, but this is the quote that I got when I inquired at that time. One of these amplifiers, a 50 watt head, 
was $560 with $120 shipping. Now, if you ask me for a 50 watt all tube head, that's a pretty good price, but throw in that it's hand wired, well, then it's a really good deal. So I was interested. I wanted to get one just to see if I'd actually get it. And because this is an amp factory, they do wrap their heads in different colors if you ask them to. So I went and asked. I wanted one in orange for a couple of reasons. One, I just like the color. It's, it's a nice color. And secondly, because I like the old 70s Marshalls. Sometimes you saw them wrapped in orange. They're pretty rare, but I always thought they were cool. So I kind of wanted one that didn't cost an arm and a leg. And for just a $20 upcharge, they'd wrap it in orange for me, which I thought was fair enough because it is a custom request. Now, the somewhat negative aspect of getting this amplifier was the weight. I placed my order mid-November 2022 with an estimated time of 20 to 25 days. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting it that quickly. That felt a little bit quick. It was coming up to the Christmas period. I was expecting some delays and um, those happened. I waited until mid-February 2023 to ask for an update on where the amplifier was um, and it took until early April of 2023 for it to be shipped out. So instead of 20 to 25 days it was closer to about five and a half months wait time. Now they were apologetic about this and they gave the reason that they were changing over from having the head shells, the wooden bit that gets wrapped in Tolex, built in a different factory to then building it in-house. So that was why there was this long delay. Um, but it's worth mentioning that that happened and uh, that's really the only negative aspect I can think of of this amplifier. Because when I did get it and I plugged it in, I was happy. Look what just arrived and I think it might have actually been worth the wait. It, it sounds... Listen. <laughs> This is what they call their 1969 head. And uh, I'm not quite sure exactly what it is. See, when it comes to just the Marshall clones that they make, they've got things like the JCM 800 style, they've got JTM 45 styles, they've got um, 1959 Plexi styles. But this one was a little bit different and I'm not sure exactly what it is, but my best guess is that it's kind of based on a modified Marshall Plexi because it does have some modifications. In fact, those modifications are kind of what drew me to it. So let's run through those. On the front of the amp, it's a classic 50 watt Plexi style amplifier with four inputs. And that means that there's no gain control on this amplifier. You've got your presence, bass, middle, treble, and then two volume controls, and that's it. Now, on a normal classic Plexi amplifier, if you wanted it to get crunchy, you'd have to turn these volumes to 10, go deaf a bit, um, but it would, it would break up and be crunchy. But to me, that's kind of unusable. I, I can't be going up to those volumes. So this amp's modern appointments are on the back, which is actually quite nice because I, I like that it kind of keeps the vintage aesthetic on the front, even though it, it doesn't really look vintage because it's wrapped in bright orange. But still, uh, it keeps the vintage aesthetic on the front control panel. And on the back, we've got two different appointments. The first thing is an effects loop, which you don't see on standard old plexi amps, which is nice to have. I don't use effects loops very often, but it's nice to be able to put a delay in there. And then there's this. On some amplifiers, you'll have a master volume, and on others, you'll have what's called a PPMV or a PPIMV, and that tends to stand for a post-phase master volume or a post-phase inverter master volume. And that sounds like a big complicated sentence, but what it means is that you can have a master volume kind of at the front of the amp, or you can have it kind of at the end of the amp. And a post-phase uh, master volume is kind of more towards the end. And they say that this changes the sound of the amplifier. You get more dirt at lower volumes, which I'm a fan of, I, I like that, but I can't compare at this point because I don't have one 
with a master volume at the front. This is just a master volume at the back. Interestingly on this amp, I've never seen the letters arranged in this way. Normally it's PPMV or PPIMV. This one's PPMIV, so post phase master inverter volume. I, I mean, it still makes sense, but it's, it's a little bit unusual to see. But I don't care though, because it does exactly what I need to make this amp usable. It allows me to crank the volumes on the front of the amplifier and get that crunch while also not going completely deaf with uh, super high volumes. <laughs> taken the back off the amplifier and we can see a little bit more clearly what our setup is. I've taken the, the three shields off. A lot of gain for just three preamp tubes and these are three 12AX7s and two EL34s, all JJ branded. <laughs> Here's what the amp sounds like with a Tube Screamer-esque type boost on the front of the amp. So you can see here what I was talking about with repairability. If any of these solder joints on these pots, for example, went, uh, it would only be a couple of solder joints, a five minute job, easy to fix. Same with the inputs and uh, the outputs for that matter, also similar, um, and the switches as well. Really, it's a pretty straightforward laid out. It's not the neatest hand wired job, but you can absolutely tell that this is hand wired. And for the price, I'm impressed. I should also quickly mention that this amp is probably one of the most responsive to speakers and cabinets that I've had. I mean, all amplifiers are responsive to different speakers and cabinets, but this one just felt a little bit more so. Uh, on the initial sound demo that you heard was kind of like the full band demo with the Huffschmidt Iceman at the start of the video, I was using this Zilla 2x12 with Celestian K100s. And when it came to the just guitar on its own uh, tone demo, it just didn't really suit the amplifier. So I went and recorded through a 1x12 with a Celestian cream back. And that sounded a lot more uh, what I was expecting and hoping for from this amplifier. So just something to note there. So I think I've kind of covered the basics of this amp. It's a traditional style 50 watt plexi amplifier. And it's got the sound. It's got the look. Uh, yeah, I know it's orange. It might not be for everybody, but they come standard in black so it does have the look of a vintage amplifier if you wanted it to have it's not excessively expensive and especially not for being hand wired because of that it's got the repairability factor going for it and it's not as if it's been unreliable either as i've said i've had this since april of last year and it's worked fine every time i've used it <laughs>
Now, if I was a shrewd businessman, I would do kind of what the amplifiers are designed to do, which is buy a pallet of them, put a KDH amplification badge on the front, and sell it for three times the price. But instead, I'm just going to tell you to do what I did and buy direct from the factory, because why bother with the middleman? I'll leave the grand website in the description, and just for the sake of clarity, this isn't like a, a paid review. I bought the amplifier, um, and uh, th there's no affiliate links or anything like that. It's it's just, yeah, this is just purely a review on something that I bought. So if you like the video, you should probably like it, and maybe subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.